So the section on linear functions turned out to be pretty large, so I had to break it up into two different parts. Uh, the first part is how we can determine if a function is linear. The second part, the next video, will be how we can actually graph linear functions. So in a nutshell, a function is linear um, if it has a constant rate of change. Okay, there's a lot of other ways that we can describe it, but that's pretty much it. And I'm just telling you what a linear function is before we jump into how to identify them from uh, tables and graphs and equations. We'll get to that very shortly. Um, but again, linear function is just a function with a constant rate of change. Make sure you write that down and you know what that is because that's important. Um, another way that we can think of a linear function is that it's a function that we can write as y equals mx plus b, where m and b are just real numbers. Okay, so I could give you um, y equals 2x minus 1. Bad handwriting, but that's that's a linear function. Okay, 2 and negative 1, those are real numbers. I could also give you uh, y, let's say we had y equals 0.1x minus 0.2. Still, linear function, 0.1 and negative 0.2 are still real numbers. Okay. Now, not every linear function has to be written like this. That's not the case. We don't have to write every linear function like that. But if you can write it like that, then we definitely know that it's linear. Okay. And this is called the slope intercept form. We'll be getting to that probably in the next section, um, if not the one after that, but definitely in this chapter. Okay. That's really, really important. Um, something that you'll see in calculus still. So um, very important. Um, but basically, right down here, as it, as it says right here, when we're talking about algebra and identifying linear functions, they're going to give you either a table, an equation, or a graph and ask you, is this function linear? Okay, pretty much. Now, that could give you coordinate points. That's pretty much the same thing as a table, a little bit different. But um, let's jump right into how we can look at a table and see um, if the function that's represented is linear. I'm going to jump right into this first table over here. And remember, the idea is, is it a constant rate of change? I didn't even really tell you what that meant, just told you the, the phrase. Constant rate of change means for every particular value of the input or for every particular change in the input or X, there is the same particular um, change in Y. That doesn't have to be the same change, but it has to be the same, um, the same particular change. And what I mean by that is right here, if we go from zero to one, X increased by one. What happened for that same increase in one when we talk about Y? For one increase, I can't, let me rephrase that. For every, for uh, an increase of one from zero to one in our input, our output, if you look, it went from two to three, that increased by one as well. Now it's just a coincidence that, the, that these are the same numbers. That's not always gonna be the case. That's rarely the case, actually. Um, but what this means is if it's a linear function in this table, every increase of one in X should give me an increase of one in Y. So let's check. If I go from one to two, X increased by one, if I go from three to four over here, we still get an increase, the same increase in the output. And then likewise, we have to double check the last set of coordinates. From two to three, X increased by one. From four to five, Y also increased by one. So for every particular increase in X, we had the same increase in Y. And that, okay, well this increased by one, this should increase by a certain amount. If I pick any other coordinate point, any other input, and I increase it by one, the corresponding outputs should also increase by the same amount, which they did absolutely. I probably should have picked an example where it's not just ones everywhere. That's the next one. But basically, if you look, this is a linear function because every single particular change in the input gives me the same change in the output. Okay, so let's look at one where we don't have ones everywhere. <laughs> um, if you look at this next example, let me move that. Um, let's go through, take a look at this one, go through the same, and I, I like to draw and, and see what's the change in the input, what's the corresponding change in the output. Go through that, um, just like the last example, and see if you can determine if this is a linear function. So hopefully you tried that out and see, you know, made some, you know, some marks and, and saw what happened with this. But what I'm seeing here is from one to two, X increases by one. From that same increase, our output goes up by four. So that means if this is a linear function, anytime I increase X by one, Y should increase by four every time, all the time, 100% of the time. If just one of them doesn't change by that amount, it's not linear. So let's see, I looks like I go from two to three, that's an increase by one. And I go from eight to 12, that's also an increase by four. Okay, that's good. What happens here, be careful. Don't assume like, oh, I got the second one. It's the same thing. Always pick, you know, make sure you, um, you go over every set of coordinate points. So this last one, as X increases by one, Y also increases by four. So every pick, 
every pick. Every point that I pick, um, every change in the input that I pick gives me the same change in the output. That's a linear function. That's what it means by a constant rate of change. If one of these had just been, you know, okay, I increased by one down here, but the output changes by five, that wouldn't be a linear function. That's not constant rate of change. Okay, so that's what that means. Um, what I also want you to know is that it doesn't have to just be an increase by one. Um, it's proportional, this change that we're talking about. So if I go from, look what happens if I go, I'm going to change the color. If I go from one to three, think of what that change is. The change from one to three is positive two. Let's see what the corresponding output change is from when x equals one to x equals three. It looks like I go from four to 12. And that's plus eight. Now, if you look, it's like, whoa, wait a minute, that's not a one, that's not a four. But if you look, it's proportionally the same exact thing. And if you want to look at it like this, take that four, uh, or you could go vice versa, four divided by its out, its input, four divided by one, that's four, eight divided by two, that's also four, right? So it's proportional, this this average, no, not average, this, um, this uh, rate of change that we're talking about, that's constant, it's proportional. Okay, so it doesn't have to always be I go up one or I increase by one, my output increases by four. That's true, but I could also increase by two, and it, if it increases by eight, that's also still linear. Okay, and that should be the case. And just as a last one, let me get rid of this and let's change it. If I go from x equals one to x equals four, that's an increase in three. Take a guess at if this is linear, which it is, <laughs> take a guess at what the corresponding output change would be. If we go from the input of one to an input of four, the output change should be plus 12, which it is, plus 12. And 12 divided by three is still four. It's still the same proportionally. And when I mean proportionally, what I mean is, um, let's imagine we had a change in input of one divided by the change in output of four. And if we have the change in input of three that I just saw and the change in the output of 12, if you look, these are exactly the same thing. If you're not comfortable with proportions, uh, go back to chapter one. We do talk about that. What does it mean to be proportional? But basically it just means two functions that are equal to each other. Now in a nutshell, okay, <laughs> it means a little more than that, but basically two functions, no, two fractions. If I said functions, I apologize. Two functions, I just said it again. <laughs> two fractions that are equal to each other. Equivalent fractions are proportional, okay? Now there's more that we can get into with that, and we do when we talked about proportions, but that's what this means. I went a little bit off, off uh, a little bit further than I intended to go with that. I just want you to be comfortable with the idea that um, every corresponding change in the input should give us the same corresponding change in the output. And I threw this stuff in there because they will ask you um, questions like this on homework assignments, um, on tests and quizzes and things like that. It's not always gonna be the same exact change in X, gives me the same exact change in Y. Sometimes they'll say, okay, um, they'll give you, you know, none of this, uh, maybe none of this. Maybe they don't give you anything but these points and this point. And they'll think, okay, is this linear? And you say, okay, well, this goes from one to four. This goes plus three and plus 12. Well, they're, they're not the same numbers. Justin told me they have to be the same numbers, but be careful. The change is exactly the same. It's proportional. If I increase by one and my output increases by four, I would expect if it was linear, that if I increase my input by three, it should increase by 12 total. Imagine like plus four, plus four again, and that's what we have. Wow, that's a four. <laughs> so um, that's that's what that means. Uh, I wanted to give you an example of, of something that you might see on a homework assignment. It'll most likely be a little bit more organized <laughs> than I just did it. Um, but let's try another example, okay? But again, same input in the, uh, same change in the input gives us the same change in the output. Um, not the same number, but uh, across every set of points that we might look at. So if we look at this last example, and I'll give you examples to work on um, to practice with, but let's take a look at this. Take a look at this one and try that one out. All right, so hopefully you got a chance to take a look at this one. Now I'm gonna go right ahead and see what happens with this input. It looks like it's increasing by two and the output increases by four. That means everything else, if I increase my input anywhere by two, it better increase the output by four or it's not linear. So if I go from four to six, that's plus two. If I go from eight to 12, that's plus four. And let's try the last one real quick. Always do all of them. Don't just assume, okay, well, it works for the first two. It'll probably work for the last one. That's the quickest way to get something wrong. And I know from experience. <laughs> so this last one, the input increases by two, but look what happens with the output. The output increases by eight. 
But if this was linear, every time we increase the input or change the input by a positive two, the output would have to change by four. So because it doesn't do it down here, this is not linear. This is a nonlinear function, okay? Now that's how we look at uh, graphs, how we can look at graphs and determine if a function, if a given function is linear. Now let's take a look at how we can look at a equation, at an equation and see if it's linear. This is basically, in a nutshell, um, what I tell my students, um, just a quick way to look at it. If you look at an equation and you see that your input, x usually, or your output, y usually, <laughs> a variable, has an exponent that's not one, then it's not a linear equation. Okay, so I didn't even put any examples up here. I'm gonna write them myself. What I want you, I will leave the x and y up there. If I gave you, let's say we had y equals 2x minus four. If you look, y has an exponent of one. Remember, if there's nothing up here, it's invisible. We just assume that's a one, it's an invisible one. So that's a one, x is an exponent of one, then we're good, that's linear, okay? If I gave you um, y squared, equals 2x minus 4. Well, x has an exponent of 1, but y doesn't. y has an exponent of 2. That's not linear. That would not be a linear equation. Another example that tricks um, a lot of students is they'll give you something like y equals 1 over x plus 5. And it's really tempting to be like, well, look, there's an x you know, here, and there's nothing there, and Justin said that's a 1. And it's tempting, but this is actually not linear because if you remember from your exponent properties, one over x is the same thing as saying x to the negative one. So any, again, anything that's not one, and I should have said a positive one, but assume you know that's just a one, anything that has an, uh, any equation that has a y or an x raised to something that's not one is not a linear function. So this would not be a linear function, okay? And we can write it multiple ways too. I could give you something like maybe um, x plus y equals five. This is actually the standard form of a linear function and we'll talk about these in I think two sections but if you look x has an exponent of one y has an exponent of one and this would be a linear function okay so this is just the shortcut um, a lot of people like to say um, can you put the equation in you know y equals mx plus b form and they'll make you um, they'll give you an equation and, and make you kind of put it in this form and if you can't put it in that form it's not linear um, that is a good way to do it and we will be going back and forth between you know different types of ways to write equations as linear equations but um, for our purposes I want you to know this this way the algebraic way of saying okay well is x or y raised to anything other than one does it have an exponent of anything other than one not a linear function that's it so the last one is given a graph can we determine if it's a linear function here's the quick trick for that look at the graph is it a line? Then it's a linear function. <laughs> That's it. If it's not a line, it's not a linear function. So um, I just drew a few, I didn't draw these, sorry. I put in a few up here um, just so you can see. This one is y equals 2x. I don't know if you can see that up there. y equals 2x, 2 times x. That's a line. That's a linear equation. Okay. If you look at this next one, let me try and move the other stuff out of the way a little bit. If we look at this next one, I want you guys to be able to have it centered on your screen. Um, take a look at that. If you look, in no place is it a line. And it, it's not even, don't, the way I said that was wrong. Um, it, it's not a line at all. It, the entire thing should be a line. This is a parabola. We'll, we'll talk about these in a few chapters, but um, this is not a line. It should be just a straight line that you see like this or like that. That would be a linear equation. This guy right here is curved everywhere. It looks like a straight line up here, but even if that was the case right here, that is definitely not a line. This is not a, uh, not a linear function, okay? And if you look at this last one, I just randomly was like, okay, what equation can I pick? What function can I pick? The square root function. We'll talk about this later in the, in the course, but um, this is not a line. That definitely doesn't look like a line. It, maybe you could make the case like, well, it's pretty straight right here, but it's gotta be the entire place. It has to be a line everywhere, right? So the very first one that we did, it was just, you know, everywhere that you see, it's a straight line. If at any place that you look on the graph, it's not a straight line, that function is not linear. Okay, that's pretty much it for graphs. And again, we'll do more practice with this. I'll put something in the description so that you can see all of these, um, looking at a table, looking at an equation, um, and looking at a graph and being able to determine, is this a linear function? 
Okay, the, the last two are kind of straightforward. I want you to be comfortable with those. The first one, you do have to do more work. Looking at a table, it definitely takes more work um, to be comfortable. Okay, is this a linear function? But again, remember, constant rate of change. Does my graph show a constant rate of change? That's a linear function, okay? Um, so that's pretty much it for this one. It ran, if we're already at, what, 15 minutes it looks like? It ran a lot longer than I thought. Um, that first part of this uh, took a lot longer. I apologize for that, but... Uh, Look for the uh, the practice problems in the description where we'll go over you know tables, equations, and graphs and see if we can determine if it's a linear function. This is a big part of Algebra 1, working with linear functions. So make sure you're comfortable with this and go through those problems. I'll post the solutions as well um, on the website. Work through those. And again, hopefully this video helped you. I kind of got off, <laughs> off track a little bit. Uh, but again, hopefully you took away what you needed. And uh, we'll see you in the next one.